God has a plan. Now, I wrote down some thoughts here this morning when I was preparing, and God was just speaking to me. And it says, before you quit, before you give up, and before you throw it away, remember these words. God has a plan. God has a plan. Amen. If you go with me to Genesis chapter 21, I want to read some of here. I want to bring out a point uh, in some of this study of Scripture. I'm not going to hold you long. I think the Lord has been speaking this morning to you through the song, through His Spirit. I believe that. I'm going to give you some meat that you can hang on to, that can grow in you, that will help you to look back and know that God says it and what, his, what He says, He'll do. What His Word says, that's what He does and how He operates and functions. It's His character, He is faithful, and you can trust in His Word. So here reading, this is what we're going to be talking about this morning, is when Hagar gives, gives up, quits, and even tosses it away, but God had a plan. So we're going to start here reading. We're, we're going to read here a little bit. We know the plan with Abraham without going into a lot of detail. We know that Abraham uh, was married to Sarah and they were going to have a child. But yet he couldn't wait upon wait on God. So he decided to uh, uh, have a, a, a child with Hagar. And so he had that child, which was Ishmael, was the child that was born. But God didn't promise him that that child would be born through Hagar, through the bondwoman, but it would be through Sarah. Sarah, even at their old age, even at their age. So anyway, here's the, here's the reading here in verse 1. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. That's what I said, didn't I? That when God says it, he's going to do it. For number 2. For Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age. And at the set time of which God had spoken to him. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him. Whom Sarah bare to him Isaac. Verse 4. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac being eight days old as God had commanded him. And Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born unto him. And Sarah said, God hath made me to laugh so that all that hear will laugh with me. Verse 7. And she said, Who would have said unto Abraham that Sarah should have given children son? And I have borne him to a son in his old age. And the child grew and was clean, and Abraham made a great feast the same day that Isaac was weaned. Now we're getting into our, our story line here this morning. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, which she had borne unto Abraham, mocking. Wherefore she said unto Abraham, Cast out this bondwoman and her son. For the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. And the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son. And God said to Abraham, Let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad, and because of thy bondwoman, in all that Sarah hath said unto thee, hearken unto her voice, and in Isaac shall thy seed be called. And all of us, uh, and also, I'm sorry, and also of the son of the bondwoman will I make a nation because he is thy seed. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and took bread and a bottle of water and gave it unto Hagar, putting it on her shoulders and the child and sent her away. And she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. And the water was spent in the, in the bottle and she cast the child under one of the shrubs. And I should remember that. She cast the child under one of the shrubs. And this was the purpose in verse 16. And she went and sat down, sat set her down over against him a good ways off. So she separated herself. She went and set so she wouldn't have to look at it. But this is why. As this as it were a, a bow shot for or a bow shot. And she said, let me not see the death of my child. She didn't want to see the death of her child. She didn't want to have to witness that. And she sat over against him and lifted up her voice and wept. We're almost done for the reading. And God heard the voice of the lad. And the angel of God called to Hagar out of, out of heaven and said unto her, What aileth thee, Hagar? Fear not, for God hath heard the voice of the lad where he is. 
Arise, lift up the lad, and hold him in thine hand, and I will make him a great nation. And God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water, and she went and filled the bottle with water and gave the lad drink. And God was with the lad, and he grew and dwelt in the wilderness and became an archer. And he uh, dealt in, and he dwelt in the uh, wilderness of Paran, and his mother took him a wife out of the land of Egypt. So the point that I want to make this morning is that God's plan restores hope, confidence, satisfaction is guaranteed. But I just want to talk to you a little bit along these, this morning, and I, I hope you stay with me just for a minute. I had a long reading, but I wanted to establish the storyline, because I want to bring out some truths that are in the storyline, where Hagar was living with Abraham and Sarah. The child had everything that it would have, that it would need. Hagar had everything that would that she would need. The supply was there, and so we see where uh, Sarah wants Hagar cast out. So he cast out Hagar. The points I want to make is not the actions of the people, but where Hagar she's cast out, but yet now she's alone. Now she's raising this child by herself, and she doesn't have the means to raise the child by herself. So she sets the child over us by the shrub because she gives up. So in that picture, I would say that she's giving up life. She's giving up a dream. She's giving up a hope. She's giving up on something that had been told her that this would be a mighty nation. That this was going to be a mighty nation. Sometimes in our life, in our situations, and our circumstances, we get caught up looking at the overall everything, and we forget about what God has told us, or what who, what heritage that we have. And we need to remember the heritage that we belong to, that it's of the living God. God is the one who spoke the word. Abraham didn't have any, any special power, but it was because God spoke the word, because Abraham became obedient to that word, that the promises were given to Abraham. So it wasn't that Abraham was a great man, it was that God was a mighty God. And I want you to get that in your spirit this morning. Then no matter what you think, no matter if you're at the end of your road, no matter if you think there's no way out, no matter if you think that I've just done everything that I can, have you tried God? Come on. Have you tried God's plan? He has a plan for your life this morning. Yes, he does. He has a plan for your life this morning. Amen. And you may feel like you're off somewhere and, and that life is at its end. But life is not at its end. Life begins at God. Life begins at God. Yes. Not only the breath of life for us to breathe as human beings, but the breath of Christ, of the Spirit of God, because of the blood of Christ. Because what He did. It's important we understand it's not just limited to for, for me to live a good life and go to church and look a certain way or act a certain way, but it's a life much more involved than that. God wants to be more involved in your life than we, many of us, give Him credit for. Many times we'll allow Him in our life for certain things, and when we really need something from Him, or we're in a desperate state, but He wants to be involved in every area of our life. Every area. I don't care what it is. I don't kind of, you may think at all, I'm just being ridiculous, and this is just a thought that, that, that just means something to me. But the Bible says that He would give you the desires of your heart. He wants to have a relationship yes. with you. That it's not bias, it's not prejudice, it's not something that holds back from you, but everything that you have need of, He is able to give it to you this morning. And Hagar, she was sitting over here, and her child was over by the shrub, and she was giving up because she was ready to die. She had come to the end of life, and the child's life on top of that. But the angel asked her, Why? Why? <coughs> Why? God has another plan. Why are we so despondent? Why are we so frustrated? Why are we so fearful? I'm not talking about your demeanor now. Hopefully you're not this morning. I'm talking about in our situations. 
Sometimes those things happen when we get along with ourselves and the enemy begins to talk to us and we begin to look at the circumstances yeah. and all the situations around us. And all of a sudden, it's just, we're just despondent. It's just, we're, we, we, you know, people are living in depression. People are living suicidal nowadays. People are killing themselves left and right. But here, here was Hagar, and I believe that, I don't know, maybe a few more minutes, maybe that's what she would have done. I don't know, I've I, I lost trial, but I, I, I think that at that moment, I mean, it was, it was difficult. It was difficult. Amen. And so, they didn't, that hadn't passed for her yet. What I'm trying to say is she hadn't even reached her real bottom. She was in the giving up mode yeah. when God rescued her. And we need to be careful that we don't allow circumstances or situations to keep us going down that road of depression. Keep us going down that road of separation. Because the enemy wants to come and separate you from your hope. Separate you from God. That's what he wants to do. Because if he can divide, then he can conquer. And we have to remember why we serve this God. We serve him because he came and died for us. We become servants of God. I like something I read. I think it was a Spurgeon I was reading about yesterday. And he was talking about a particular message. And he said, what people don't realize is that once we get saved, that we're not sitting on display in heaven like, look at these guys that I have. But yet we're walking in this world with Christ running the league, with the Holy Spirit directing us. You're going to have trial. You're going to have failures. You're going to have frustration. You're going to have fear. Those things are just the way it is. We're not promised anything. I think a lot of people don't want to serve God and follow God because they feel like God's not there for them. But we were born in affliction. In affliction. We were born in affliction. Jesus saved us in affliction. So that doesn't make my life on earth that's going to be promised anything perfect. No. Everybody doesn't have to like me. Everybody doesn't have to agree with me. Everything doesn't have to go my way. But it doesn't matter. Because I'm serving a mighty God. And we get caught up in the things that of looking at the situation, the circumstances, and the rejections, and the insecurities, then we forget that God has a plan for our life. And in all that plan, even in the middle of the mess, even when we're struggling, I have peace. Yeah. I have a calm. Yes. I have hope. Thank you. I have strength. Yeah. I have a direction. God always steps into my scene. He's always there to carry me, to lift me up. I praise Him this morning. I praise Him this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Jeremiah 29, 11 and 13. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I hope you write down these scriptures and I hope you memorize them. Not just to memorize them, but to let them be in here. These will help you through every situation. I know some of them are really familiar, but that's okay. That means you should know them even better. You should be able to quote them. But in Jeremiah 29, 11 through 13, it says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you. This is God speaking. Yeah. Saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you an expected end. Is that what we're talking about this morning? To give you an expected It's expected. Not that Jesus died. Not that they put you in the grave. And maybe you made the right choice and you get to go to heaven or, or you go to hell or whatever, wherever you make your choice at. But he has a perfect plan for you that's expected for you to prosper. Yeah. Let's finish reading that. Let me read 11 again because that's just powerful. For I know the thoughts that I think, that God thinks toward you, not Lynn, not Bob, not Bill, not Jane, not Mary, you, 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 all you are you, you. He's talking to us individually, corporately. Saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then shall ye call upon me. And ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And I just got to stop there just for a second. 
Because, I mean, that's a recipe. Yes. Then shall ye call upon me. He's talking about you in relationship with him as his children. And ye shall go and pray unto me. And so something's going to happen there. You're going to have a relationship. Let's take the word pray out. You're going to come and talk to me. Come on. They're going to come and commune with me. You're going to worship me. You're going to spend time with me. Because all of that is communication with God. God reveals Himself in worship. God reveals Himself in the situation and circumstances. God reveals Himself in the altars or in devotion or whatever we surrender. God reveals Himself in all of those areas. God is continually talking to us. Continually. To who? To you. Yeah. To you. And what does He say? And I will hearken. I'll hear you. I'm listening for you. It says that his ears are inclined. That means he's like this. He's waiting for you to call upon him. He's waiting for you to talk to him. He's waiting. He's not impatient. God's not impatient. God's just not standing there thinking, well, they got about five more minutes, I think, and you know, I've been here before with him. I'm no, he's inclined. He doesn't say for a time or for a season. He's inclined. He's waiting. He's waiting to hear from you. I think that's what our service was about this morning too. He was saying it in the spirit. I'm waiting for you. I want to hear from you. You're my child. I have peace for you. I have strength for you. I want you to know how much he thinks about you and loves you this morning. Powerful. Praise the Lord. 13. And ye shall seek me and find me. Wow. Not maybe. You know, looking for me. Well, you better be there at 2 o'clock because I'm going to be gone. I know you're going to find him. You're going to find him. If you seek him, you're going to find him. And that's just not for salvation. We just so hooked up in salvation. Oh, I'm looking. No, that's for anything. Any need you have in your life, if you seek God, guess what? You're going to find him. You're going to have the answer. You're going to get the answer. And it may not be on your time, and it may not be to your taste, but you're going to get the answer because He said He would. Right. Not because I'm brainwashed or because I'm, I'm some freak that just believes this. I know that I know because He's done it in my life. He shows up when I don't know what to do. He shows up and gives me knowledge beyond my knowledge. Yes. He shows up and puts people in my life that I have no clue what they're even talking about or doing with me, but yet all of a sudden I have answers that God has spoken different ways, different avenues. Yeah. I can tell you all day stories where God always, always finds me when I'm looking for Him. When ye shall search for me with all... Oh, oh man! What's up with that? When you, when you search with me with all your heart, with every promise there's a condition. This is the condition of the promise that he's making. If you sell out, if you search him with your complete heart, your complete heart, not, well, it's good enough. Well, I praise God today. I read the Bible a couple times, and I, I feel like I lived a Christian life, and I ran into that lady that I, I didn't run over in the car, you know, because she got in my way, and so it was a Christ-like type deal. I didn't kill her. And sometimes we base our Christianity based upon some of our own good actions. But it's with my whole heart. With my altar. My altar in here brings me, which is my reasonable service, the scripture says, yeah. my sacrifice, my reasonable service. What's the scripture? How's the scripture say? Holy and acceptable in God. What is it? Holy and acceptable. Did you know it? Holy and acceptable unto God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cheryl, I know you know it. Everybody's on the point. To present yourselves uh, a holy and acceptable unto God. And that's your reasonable service. Holy and acceptable is your reasonable service. To present your bodies as the living, right? 
Your body, your whole heart, your whole body, your whole, when you put the body in everything, guess what? That's everything. That's the heart. That's my children. That's my situations. That's everything I put in there. My whole life, anything that has to do with me and my life, it goes in to the circle. Let's just call it that. And it goes to the altar. And so when I need something for God, and I come to God, and I bow down before God, and I lay it before God completely, He's going to hear me. Yeah. He's going to respond. Because my whole heart is in on it. And if we do that with our children, if we start praying for our children in such a way, if we start praying for uh, our jobs in such a way, or our neighbors or our circumstances in such a way, it says He hears you. And He will respond. And He will give you an answer. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Jesus wants to share your burden. Jesus wants to share your burden. Go with me to Matthew 11, 29. We're almost done. I don't feel like I'm in some race. You're, you're so, so good to me. And I appreciate that. Thank you, Jesus. Matthew 11, 29-30. And it says, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. And I am meek and lowly in heart. And ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Lord wants to come alongside with you. Yeah. It is not something where He, okay, now I heard you. I heard you and you gave with your whole heart. And I'm going to meet your need. He wants to come alongside you. He wants to take on your heaviness. He wants to be yoked up with you. And to be yoked up with you means that He walks alongside of you. The yokes would be put on the oxen and there would be two together and they would walk. One would be in the lead. That's Christ. He's in the lead. If you let Him be in the lead, mm -hmm. sometimes it becomes a mess because we're pulling another way and we, we may be kind of yoked up with Him, but He ain't in charge. And He wants our whole heart. He wants us to be yoked up with Him to where we're just walking and makes our burdens light. Because He's guiding. He's leading. What does Psalm 23 say? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. But He leads us. He walks with us in the cool. As the good shepherd. Not just to walk with us, but to protect us. To love us. And I appreciate that this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And then my last. Casting all your cares upon Him, for He cares for you. And that, that one there is in 1 Peter 5, 6 and 7. And that reads, Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, that He may exalt you in due time. You say, well, that don't have anything to do with what you're doing. If you humble yourself before God, He's going to exalt you in due time. Yeah. So if you've surrendered your heart to Him, you've surrendered that need, and like I said, it may not be going your way at that time, but yet, in due time, He's going to exalt you. He's going to lift you up. The Bible tells us to, that he will, if we go to Him in secret, that He'll reward us openly. So the question I have here then this morning is, are, are you at your end? Have you any plans? Sometimes we got plans after our plans. Our plans go south sometimes. We still got another plan. I'm not ready to give it up. I got another plan. That one didn't work out yet. Maybe I try it this way. You know, John or Jim Bob or whoever, I see it work in his life. So it's got to work in my life. You know what I'm saying? Dr. Phil says that it can work. You know what I mean? And Dr. Oz, uh, they tell me that it'll work. So I'm going to try their program instead of go to God. I'm going to call that old busybody up and maybe they've got something to say. I want their input because they've had to cross somebody that's crossed this road before. No, your only hope is God. 
Your only hope is God. That's right. When you get in those times, your only hope is God. Your only hope is God, not even in those times. Always, your only hope is God. Amen. And if we learn to sell out right. to God, if we learn to give Him our whole heart, this is what we're really pushing. Give your whole heart to the Lord. Church will. Yeah. It's sad to say, but the church world, I'm not talking about denominational. I'm talking about the church world. We've become lazy. We become self-serving. If it ain't my way, then I'm going down the highway. Mine. And we have to turn around. That's the call that you're going to hear in 2021. And I'm prophesying now. That's the call you're going to hear for 2021. It's God's way. He's been saying it all year. He's given us warning. But it's God's year next year. And we're going to have to sell out. We're going to have to change course. We're going to have to forget about what we picked up. Many of us didn't start out there. Many of us didn't start out there. But these generations and our educational system and everything else has changed. And it's a constant. Whether it's on the television, what, no matter what it is, you're hearing the same old message. Me, me, me. I, I, I. It's all about me. And then we wonder where we end up alone in life at the end of the day. Because it was about me and nobody, and it was about them when they were me. And the me was over me over there. By the time you get 10 me's, guess what? They're no, you. Just a lot of me's. We need to be careful with those things. Those are the truths. You know, say, well, that's not, that's, that's not strictly. You're not giving me a scripture that I can go to and, and, and know that. I'm telling you a principle. That if self, if flesh, is in charge, then you're headed down a dirty road. Right. And it ain't going to be fun because... Flesh and blood shall not but, Exactly. Exactly. That flesh and blood's going to wear out. But God will continue to sustain us. We're just here for God. We're here for God. Yeah. I thank God I'm getting older, you know what I mean? Before when I first started out, it was like a lot of years. Like, okay, God, we got a long way to go. Now I'm thinking, okay, we're running out of time. <laughs> You know, so but it's important that we understand it, and at a young age we should understand that it's about God. Yeah. It's about God, and the awesome thing about it is the satisfaction that it brings, the peace that He brings in those things. They may not seem like it because we got to give some stuff up, but at the same time, those things weren't that great in the first place. The second breath, the life God has planned for you. Are you ready for that? Are you ready for a second breath? Yeah. The life that God has planned for you? Come on. Don't settle for... Hagar was ready to settle until the angel of the Lord appeared to her. But it says, there, if you remember the story there, what happened was she got water. The baby obviously was healthy because he became an archer. And then the mother even picked the wife out. That was the end of the reading that I had. So that was the plan that God had that they would be a nation. Is there a nation in you this morning that needs to rise up? You say, well, I'm, I'm not a king or nothing like that. There's things in us and people around us that we affect. What kind of nations rise up in you? I think there's a nation that needs to rise up in us. We need to take full conquering control of the things that God has given us for our life. And we need to let those things grow. That our fruits would remain. I know I'm putting a lot of scripture together, but the Bible talks about our fruits remaining. Yeah. I want my. I want to leave a legacy. I don't care if you know my name. I don't care if you remember what I look like. I don't care if you ever remember you crossed my path. But I want people to know that Christ is the only way. He's the only hope. He's the only help. And what a satisfying life that I live, or that you could live, because of.